<laughs> yeah, I can hear you. Yo, How boy, look at this. It's amazing. That's amazing. Pretty, yeah, pretty stunning. Are you playing out there? Yeah. Uh, yeah, we're so we're we're. I'm just hanging with some friends. Um, we're basically, you know, we came out to just like chill, and music was kind of the, you know, like a thing that we were like, oh, let's just set up our instruments and and we'll just, you know. <laughs> That's sort of a fun thing to do. So I recommend yeah, that from yeah, mostly I mean, just most, yeah, yeah cool. mostly just kind of chilling and and uh, and re revitalizing our you know our our souls. <laughs> yeah, in the best location possible. <laughs> oh my gosh! Yeah, it's awesome, man. I mean, so I, have you ever been to the Pacific Northwest before? No, um, I work. Obviously, we spoke about uh, for the cruise lines for Carnival Cruise Lines, and yeah, so yeah, yeah. We primarily do like the Caribbean and like. Yeah those islands but i've never i haven't done that much of the u.s like especially the pacific, pacific coast you know well i'm actually kind of surprised because seattle is a very big like um a lot of boats always park uh in the port of seattle and we always kind of you know see them and, and joke about it but it's yeah it seems it, that's awesome man that's yeah super i mean the caribbean I'd, I'd probably rather be in the caribbean now, so. <laughs> yeah well just to give you a bit of background um obviously you know i yeah i do the ships but then this series came about from uh when i was in university i was studying <clears throat> and one of the projects was like identifying kind of an area in your in your field where you feel you could like improve or blah 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 so i would read always yeah, like, so i'd read like modern drama and those sorts of things and those magazines are like great but then i was reading them and then all they would ever talk about is like gear so it'd be like what are you using what is this yeah, what is that always gear. And it's it, was always so, it was infuriating and so what like yeah. i wanted to know and what i think a lot of other people wanted to know was more about like how they did it what they did to get there you know like what they do what they practice how they balance their life you know like the actual real life question yeah, the, and the ins and outs and, and dude it's so refreshing to hear you say that because i was actually talking with my friends this morning I'm like you know i hope we're not just going to talk about gear because I'm, <laughs> I'm such a not i'm not a gear person at all like i've played the same drum set like that's just that's my kit you know what i mean yeah. and i'm like and so i'm always i've always been intrigued by yeah how you can do more with less like you know my favorite drummers are the ones who don't have you know china symbols and crazy th it's like i i like to see what you can do with a small palette you know what i mean yeah well that's why and, this is gonna be this is gonna be great now that you've just yeah. said that <laughs> <laughs> yeah <Woo -hoo. laughs> i recognize that drum kit because i must have watched the the ben howard glastonbury gig about a million times yeah man so that's that's my kit so i i have the exact same kit uh here that i have over there so basically the two exact kits but um which was nice like when i when i started playing with ben he was he was he's just one of the best dudes ever and when i started playing with him he's like dude what's your dream kit and, and, and when i told him he's like that's it I was like, <laughs> he's like you know what do you want he's like what do, you know what what do you want your setup to be i'm like this is this is my kit and so <laughs> then I, I i got the same one i got in touch with so it's cnc is the drum company um, they're out of Kansas City. They do everything is just handmade and and just awesome. And um, so when I when I got the one with Ben, I was like, well, I want the same one, you know, over over here to yeah. to be able to be able to play. So yeah, I've got I've got my CNC, and then this is my baby, dude. I almost lost this snare um, when I came over for the Goon Hilly gig. They lost it at the at, at Heathrow. No, and I was like. And I and I was being so like nice about it. I was like, she's like, is it, she's like, is it a, an important object? I'm like, yes, it's very like, it's, it's my favorite drum. Like, but I was underplaying, and I'm like, it's only my favorite drum ever. Like, no, no big deal <laughs> if you don't find it. But yeah, so yeah, so thank you so much yeah. for agreeing to do this. This is like a huge. Oh, huge. I, I'm a huge, huge, huge Ben Howard fan. So this is a really yeah. good deal. So thank you. Same. Absolutely. So, yeah. We are in the midst of obviously still this pandemic and in this country yeah, totally. we're still like we're just now starting to come out of it. So how's yeah. it been? I know you did the, you like you just said, you did the Goon Hilly gig over here, but how has the yeah. rest been? You know, to be honest with you, um, I was getting to this point, like being out in Seattle, like getting some, some like real jobs. And I was just like, oh, okay, this is, this is what we're doing now, you know? Cause I mean, the music industry got kind of flipped on its head, you know, when all this happened, we were, I was actually in the middle of a tour when it got shut down and 
we were live on the radio actually and uh the the radio person got slipped like a a note from the like governor just being like yeah there's nothing happening and she goes so are you guys still playing your show tonight we're like i don't think so it doesn't sound like it <laughs> um so yeah i mean i was i was getting i was just getting into like i was working at like a co-op i don't know if you guys have that over there it's basically yeah, like a fancy yeah. like a fancy grocery store kind of yeah and just like just working you know because i'm like what else am i gonna do you know i mean i couldn't teach lessons i couldn't play gigs i couldn't you know do the thing We've just lost Kyle for a second. I'm sure he will come back. Okay, cool. All right. Hey, we're back. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, as I, as I was saying, like, um, yeah, it, it, it was right when I was starting to like lose kind of hope. And then Ben, Ben is so classic for this as well. Like he always gives you like a weak heads up, like no matter what. <laughs> And I was just like, I was like, dude, it's been a pandemic. Like you could give me more than a week, you know? <laughs> and, and so I had to go into the, to like my work and be like, Hey, I'm, you know, going overseas. And they were, they were just like, dude, absolutely. Like live your, you know, live your dream. But so yeah, long story short, um, you know, everyone's been doing their thing. I think we were just, we were so excited to see each other. Like it was amazing to just get to play music again and just, um, just be just hang, like the hang with that band is always so fantastic so it's always just like non-stop laughter and and just wonderful but to learn the these new i mean this new record is is pretty magical and uh you know i didn't play it a lot on this record because we did one session in paris um that i was involved with um which is this yeah which was the session and then he did a lot of it up in new york um and so it was kind of like learning, you know, learning these crazy tunes, you know, yeah. and we, we got together and we looked at each other. We're like, Oh my God, how, and he even knew, he's like, how are we going to learn these songs in like a week? <laughs> yeah. Uh, he seems we, like that type of guy who's like super, is he like, I'm guessing he's super laid back. He's amazing, dude. He's, he's the best um, dude. He's the most laid back person, but he can be very, um, he knows what he wants, yeah. you know? And I, and I think, I think that's the thing that like some people read him the wrong way where they they think that he he can be intense and he's intense in that way because he just he he gets very frustrated because he he knows what he wants and he's such a smart guy yeah and so it's just like I think sometimes he gets very frustrated with like because he can't just get it across easily yeah um but dude I I couldn't imagine a better boss like he it, it, he's amazing you know and just i mean such a uh, i mean you know if you're a fan like he's just such a musical wizard like he's always trying to outdo himself you know what i mean like he's yeah. like challenge himself and just sort of like yeah just make yeah. things he's, he's like he's like criminally underrated in this country Dude, it's, like, it's nuts. Face, were you a fan or like all the like the whole time because i know he had yeah. uh, a different drummer and a different bass system different bass player totally yeah, they so when I, brothers, yeah it was really funny so when i actually so how i met ben was through a band called his golden messenger and uh i basically got asked because so i don't know if you know matt mccann he's one of my favorite drummers ever he's the drummer for bon Iver. um oh, okay. and he so his wife was pregnant and so uh his golden messenger needed a drummer to go on this tour opening for ben and they they asked me he's like yeah do, do you want to like do this tour i'm like fuck yeah i love ben howard and nobody <laughs> nobody else in his like knew of ben because ben literally found about found out about his golden messenger from seeing the like cd at his local like uh vinyl shop in totnes like it was just one of those like weird random situations and so i was the only one who knew ben howard because i had played one of his songs at a wedding once i think it was uh <laughs> Like black flies or probably I don't know who knows which which one, but, flies, but yeah. So like, interested. yeah, yeah. So I went into it being like, yeah, I know who Ben Howard is, and then the shows that we opened for him were like it was just when I forget where we were was blowing up. So we were doing like these insane shows, and that album rocks as well. I think that's it's my insane record. Oh, yeah. I mean, to walk in and to be able to play those songs was just amazing. Um, and he was just in such a he was in such a 
intense spot like personally and I think I just kind of came in at the right time and and like talked to him like a human like I think everyone around him was kind of just um you know being yes people or like you know just sort of you know dealing with how big he was getting and I sort of walked in and was like dude let's do you want to talk like just go have a drink and like chat and I think that that just like very spoke to him a lot and yeah and then I got a you know an email and he was like dude how would you feel about being in my band like what (laughs) you know like that's the most insane thing you know and I was in a place in my life where like you know, I didn't have a significant other. I didn't have, you know, anything going. I was single. I was just like, he's like, and he actually, he's like, dude, I'll give you 24 hours to think about it. And I think I called him back like five minutes later. I was like, (laughs) dude, yeah, Yeah. it's 100% on. Like what a, and what a magical, I still pinch myself every time I get to hang with those guys. I mean, it's, you know, and I think honestly, you know, like you said, Ben is underrated, but like Mickey and Nat, dude, Nat is like, I think one of the best guitar players like in the world, like he's just quietly like this yeah. amazing, I mean, every single person in that band is mint. And I always, I'm like, why would you guys, like you guys could have easily gotten an English drummer. Like, why would you, why? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, that, that's you get I've, some. I've, I've been so yeah. intrigued to know how that came about. Um, yeah, so that's, that's like incredible. Cause I like, I wasn't yeah. sure how big he was over there, you know? He's not, you know, it's funny because he's not like nobody under like every time I tell someone that I play with Ben Hart, they're like, who, you know, I think um, over in the States, it's such a, and I'm always intrigued by that because like the bands that make it over in England from the States and then vice versa, like Oasis over here, like, yeah, they had a hit, but like over there, it's like insane. You know what I mean? Like, level. Yeah. <laughs> totally. And so, but I mean, we still play big gigs over here. Like we played like Radio City Music Hall and Red Rocks and, but you know, his fans, and I think what he's doing with these newer records as well is he's keeping the people that want that, that like get it. He's like Dylan, I think, you know, it's yeah, like I think so too. some, some people like don't get it. And they're like, oh, I just want to hear you know every kingdom or i want to hear i forget where we're or whatever but like if you stick with him you're gonna realize that he just he's insane like he'll he'll like he'll like start playing a song like you know at practice and he'll be like oh this is just something i'm working on i'm like what the fuck is wrong with you like you're the most like insane songwriter i've ever met like it's just yeah it never it never gets old and it never is I, I try to not let it get lost on me, like what I'm involved in and, and what I'm a part of. So, well, I'm guessing yeah. going from like, because obviously you're American, how big yeah. is Glastonbury Festival? Uh, to did you, did you, did you know before you played it? That I, had no idea. Yeah. I was just joking with, I, was, I think I was talking with maybe my dad or something, but I was like, I was like, they, they tried to build it up, you know, they tried to tell me that it was this insane thing. And I was just like, I've played music festivals before. It's not a big deal, you know? And my my knees almost like gave out when we walked out. Well, and also the circumstances behind it because we had to cancel um, like three festivals leading up to it because Ben had, um, he was sick and he was like on his death. He was like very, very sick. And so we thought that we weren't gonna be able to do Glastonbury. And he got up there with like 102 temperature and. I mean, you, if you've seen it, like he just, we kept, we kept looking at each other like, dude, where is this coming from? Like, he just sang his ass off. I don't know where he, I mean, he had pneumonia. Like he was, he was very sick. So, but yeah, I mean, like I said, my knees like gave out on me when I walked out on that stage. Cause they were just like, oh yeah, it's, you know, it's pretty nuts. <laughs> it's just like, I'll never forget that, that feeling and that vibe. And I mean, I'm sure you could see the look on my face. I was just like, oh my God, this is absolutely mental, you know? Yeah. And yeah, and Glastonbury, I mean, you've you've probably been to the festival. I've never been, actually. I've never been. The, the, okay. the tickets are incredibly difficult to get hold of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're, they're yeah, they sell out like even before the... Yeah, yeah. and the especially for you guys, you played like prime spot, like literally just going into yeah. like five or six o'clock, I think it was. It was at dusk and well, the funny thing was again, like because I didn't know the situation, I just overdid it. So like we just celebrated so hard 
And so our tour manager, because Ben was, uh, had, uh, you know, pneumonia, he was able to get us parked up behind the stage the entire weekend. And so basically our backstage is like, we just walked back. And so I, uh, I fell asleep. It's a, it's a story that everyone will tell, but I fell asleep during chemical brothers. I, I want to see chemical brothers so bad. And I was sleeping because I just overdid it the whole day. I was just like, this is amazing. And then everyone kept trying to wake me up for chemical brothers. I'm like, uh, I, I can't possibly, I'm so tired. And so I, thought that, I thought that gig was absolutely incredible. Yeah, it was, it was you know, it was really good. And it's one of those like, yeah, I, I, I usually don't like see myself playing, you know, it's one of those things, but like that gig, everything just hit, you know, the one thing that sort of ticks me off is I rushed during time is dancing. Like, Cause I was so excited and it was just like, I was just like, and I knew I was rushing, but I, you know, that's one of my, like you said, you're classically trained. And like, you know, one of the things that got knocked into my head when I was really young was like, don't rush, don't, right. you know, right, get excited. Right, right. Right. And during time is dancing. Like every time I hear that Glastonbury said, I'm like, Oh God, I rushed so bad. Like I just was so excited. Oh, I, you know, I think you absolutely held uh, i thought it was absolutely like i've watched it like a million times and like and, I think, was, yeah. that, was that the one where you did the fear and keep your head up but like a different version of those songs yeah we yeah. did we sort of added a verse and yeah it was yeah. it was pretty magical but yeah it was i think you know the thing with time too which i th the, the older i get and the more that i play drums is like it is it should be elastic you know i think that's a oh, thing absolutely. like my my like my favorite drummers are like Levon Helm from the band and like you know he's always you know dealing with whatever you know it, it, and because sometimes like when I hear music and I hear rushing it's like oh the rushing or like that's rushing but sometimes it just you're you're feeling the moment and it should you know it shouldn't yeah. be just well, it and if you breathe, wanted a, yeah. if you wanted a if you wanted a drum machine then you should just have a drum machine but like mm -hmm. that's why drummers like should be elastic and should like yeah it should be fluid in that way so did you um i the last podcast the the one before the last podcast i did was with a guy called tom marsh he plays for lana del rey and he, awesome from london and so he realized how big glastonbury was and he he had been to maybe like eight glastonbury's before it and when oh, i yeah. was to him about it it was like everything he ever hoped for like he got off the bus and he met robert plant um so was there anyone at glassmere that you that you got to meet well um funny enough so i grew up in wisconsin and i actually grew up working at a summer camp with justin vernon from bon Iver. like he's a he's an old friend of mine really um but but i but but he's always been my favorite musician like i used to see him when i was in high school you know when he was like in a band like when he was just starting art what? And so, but, but I ran into him there. Uh, and it was just, that was cause, and he goes, he's like, yeah, I'm just here. Like kind of, you know, scoping things out for my festival and just seeing what happens. And then he ended up playing with Kanye wet. Like, he's like, yeah, I'm just kind of chilling out. And so we go to see Kanye set like right after we played. And of course he's like right there front row. Like, I'm like, dude, come on, <laughs> like nuts. So like to run into him was pretty magical for me. Um, but yeah, we really didn't. I mean, because it was such a whirlwind, we just uh, the late night sets were really fun. I, I'm trying to think of like all the gigs we saw. Anderson Pack, I didn't get to meet him, but um, what an incredible uh, drummer and just yeah, I, that set blew me away. Um, but yeah, I mean, just all of it. It's it's basically like being in New York City of a music festival. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, 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 yeah. It was like every moment was just this like incredible uh, situation. So well, I think it's about one hundred and twenty to one hundred and fifty thousand people would have been watching. Yeah, it's nuts. It was absolutely nuts. Like I just couldn't wrap my head around it, really. <laughs> you know, and even as we were driving up, I was just like, oh, this is cool. This is like quaint. <laughs> What a quaint little town. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, so have, you, have you been able to play at all? Or have you been, been able to stay busy during all this? Um, we got off the ships this time last year. We were, we, were in, uh, we were actually in Mexico when we found out. And then they just told us everyone was going home. So we were like, we, I mean, because I, when, when we were out there, when, when you're on a ship, you're in like a kind of bubble anyway. So oh, totally. You're, yeah. You're very rare. Like it's probably like when you're on tour, you just don't have time. You don't really like care about outside news. And then when exactly. you're, and then my mom yeah. was texting me like, 
this thing is pretty serious. And I was like, oh, it's not going to be that serious. And then yeah, we'll see, we'll see what happens. And, so yeah. I came home and I think I came home quite naive. So I came home like, oh, it'll probably be like maybe two months and then we'll be back. A couple week, like maybe a week or like a couple weeks. Yeah, yeah, totally. I never imagined that we would be in a situation like a year and a half later where like we potentially are going back this summer, hopefully. Yeah. Well, um, the pubs are open. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That'll keep me going. I think. And so, yeah. And so I think I've just been just trying to do a, like just a lot of practice because I studied from when I was uh, 18 all the way to 23 or 24. And then I got the cruise job. So, hi. Hey, this is Heather. This is my friend. Hello, good yeah, morning. she's an amazing musician. How we've just been, we've been playing, been playing some music and hanging. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um dude that's awesome yeah yeah, dude, so I, play, sort of, yeah I played yeah. so consecutively like back to back i never actually had time where i could just practice on things that i wanted to you right know? right yeah and totally. so i've just been working on like so like the areas that i actually i recently read uh benny greb's book uh effective oh, practice for me uh, and he talks so about good. this like he talks about this this concept now of like this unlimited amount of material for drummers mm -hmm. or any musician totally so Absolutely. how do you like navigate in a world where everything is like, you could have, you can just follow whatever path you want. And he tries to practice like willful ignorance. So he says like, yep. you know, just pick what you want to learn and just try and block everything else out, you know? And, yeah. Well, and it's, it's easier said than done, but it's like yeah. one of those things where it's like, you're always thinking about like, Oh, maybe I should be, you know, why am I not working hard enough or not doing this or that? But, um, like Carter McLean too is like another one of my favorites. I'm sure you follow him, but like, but yeah, Benny Greb, like just those dudes who like simplify things and just are like, we're going to stick to what we want to do and just be the drummer that we want to be. And I think, you know, I get, I get it like, you know, like I was saying earlier, like I get imposter syndrome all the time because I'm just like, really, like I, was, like, I was like, why would Ben, you know, like, why would Ben want me, you know, and just, and you just get in your own head. But then like, it, it was reaffirmed, like when I was back there, like playing with them, I'm like, oh yeah, this is like, right. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. Like the, I, I am good and I am a great drummer, you know, but it's so easy because I think, because you, like you said, all the information's out there and you can get so overwhelmed being like, you can literally watch any concert on the internet, right? You know, you can see your favorite drummer play on youtube you know and so yeah. it's there's it just so much so, yeah it would be so easy to forget that the people like the, you know ash Stone, you think shuffles jeff picaro you yeah think shuffles. dude ash Stone's amazing like, yeah you know there are certain people in the categories that you associate with those things which is what they've probably dedicated a huge portion of their oh, life absolutely and they so commit for themselves us, you know, doing for us yeah. what what's difficult is is like if you do get pulled and you think right i want to like be like ash shown but then i want to be like this guy then this then this you're getting pulled totally. in so many directions you're not actually bet bettering yourself in any of them exactly you know? and i think you know going back to like so levon helm like i said is my favorite and and he whenever i get lost drumming i always go back to him and i'm like he's the best drummer ever and he was not flashy ever he was always just serving the song and i think that's what i try to remember like with ben too is like I'm just here to serve the song. Like, I don't want to be flashy. I know I'm not a flashy drummer. That's not my, it's not my thing. You know, that's for other people to, to, to do, you know? And, but I, I just like to, when I hear a good song, I want to be like, how can I make this song, you know, sing or, or, or be the thing that it needs to be? Um, because yeah, like you said, you can, you can get overwhelmed, like seeing drummers and being like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. But I'm never, you know, I'm never going to be that. It's not who I want to be as a drummer either, you know? And that's for other people, like the flashiness, like it's fantastic and there's a time and a place for it. But I think my favorite drummers ever are the ones who just can almost not be, you know, like felt not heard. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, you're just there and you're doing your thing and, and it's just amazing. Like bass playing, and you know, in the same way. It's like the, the best bass players that I've ever played with, you don't even know they're there. Yeah. That's like the ultimate compliment, you know? It's well, like, you're just mistake, playing. Like, and... You are an incredible drummer. Like, I think you do uh, such well, a great thanks. job at, at what you do. Like, especially in terms of, like, There's Your Man is probably my favorite track off the Dude, new album. And that that's, 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 that's you playing, song. right? Yeah, that's me playing. So, I, that think was a I think your 16th one. notes, like your 16th note single groove is like 
the it's like what I aspire to with my. Uh, uh, I think it's cheers, so man. Rock solid, and it's just like that means like Sage's that burning, means right? So much. Yeah. Like What's Sage's that? Burning, when I watch Sage's Burning on the Sage, group, it's, Sage it's is like, nuts. Yeah. It's, it's almost a similar groove, but it's just like, you have just got that down to a fine art, man. So was that something, have, was it something you I really appreciate on? that, yeah. Did you work on that? I mean, is that something you've like actively worked on or was it just something that came about? Yeah, it's just one of those things that like, I, I think it's, it's like in the wheelhouse, you know, it's like one of my just like playing a groove like that is just it feels comfortable for me. You know, that's like 16th note, like that groove. But dude, it's funny that you say there's your man because we chased that song the entire tour of that record. And we never, like, I don't think Ben ever was happy with the way that we did it live because it was one of those that like, it worked so perfectly on the album mm -hmm. and the way that we chopped it and, and, and did it, like we were never going to do it live. And so yeah we every single time we tried to play it live it was it was such a stressful situation and ben we'd always like we'd always like make eye contact before i'm like oh god here we go like let's see how this let's see how this works out you know yeah um but you know i i loved it actually my favorite performance of that song we did um with jen wasner from y oak which is another one of my absolute favorite bands andy stack He's another dude you should reach out to and talk to drum wise. He's one of my favorite drummers. What's so we got, we got uh, Y Oak. Yep. And Andy Stack. So it's a duo. And I, so Ben actually has always trusted me to pick our openers, which is insane. Like ever since we met, like he loves my taste in music. So we like, I've always gotten to pick like who we open. And so I've always shouted like a lot of our friends. And so Y Oak got to open us up open for us on the last uh noonday dream tour in the states so they did like red rocks with us and a lot of really cool wow. gigs um but she played with us on late night um we did a late night show and it was just me ben mickey and her and it was like one of my favorite performances of their like i finally felt like i'm like there it is like, you know because we try to overcomplicate it so much, and then it finally just like sat in this spot that was. Is that the James fantastic. Corden. That was, that was the James Corden one, right? The James Corden one. Yep, yep, yep. Which was funny because he was English. <laughs> yeah. It's like, of course we're gonna play like an English late night show. Like, so did him and Ben? Ha like, I was surprised that James Corden had Ben on, not because Ben, like Ben is like incredible, yeah. but I was just surprised that James Corden would even know, you know. Yeah, and Ben was just so like, you know, James Corden was just trying to be so, you know, open and lovely and Ben is just Ben, you know, so <laughs> it was just, he just was like so over it. But like, yeah, it, it was a fun performance. Like that was a really cool one for sure. And you got but, to play Jules Holland, which is like the biggest. Jules Holland was not. That's yeah. like the biggest UK, like any UK, any musician I speak to from the UK, they have two main goals usually. One is Pyramid State yep. and the other one is Joe yep. Holland. Totally. And so you have done them both. And that was a that was another one where I didn't understand the gravity of the situation before mm -hmm. we like got there and we're doing it. And then once we were doing it, I was just like, oh, this is like incredible, you know. And that was a fun, that was a really fun performance. You know, I think the thing with the Noonday Dream Tour is Ben tried to throw, like, I, we were so confused with that record. And so he kept trying to just throw more at it live. And I think looking back on it, like we talked about this last time that I saw him and he was just like, yeah, we should have just, you know, he was like, let's throw strings at it. Let's get like more, let's get another drummer, you know? And Remy is fantastic. Remy from, um, uh, he plays with Daughter, but he's a, uh, he actually lives in Portland, oh, which wow. is funny. That's a, that's a really funny story. He's from France, but, he met his girlfriend. He did a study abroad in Fargo, North Dakota, and then met his like, you know, dream girl and then ended up moving out, living out. So he he actually lives not far from where we're at right now. Yeah. But um, but yeah, I, as far as like if there was someone else involved drumming wise, he was the best dude because uh, he's such a em empathetic uh, drummer. You know what I mean? I think we both are. And so it just it worked really well. But I was very confused like when ben was just like should we get more percussion like what you know what should we do and it was just like i think you know like we were saying i think stripping things back is the key more than just throwing more information into music it's always just like what can we not what can we not say you know what can we <laughs> yeah <laughs> where's the space and, and also yeah. ben ben is like known for that look at the look at the um 
Oh my God, the Burr Island EP. You know, yeah, that, totally. so, that those those four songs have so much space. Oh it is gosh. like it's almost like incredible that it's like you know like Black Flies and Esmeralda is one of my favorite oh my ever God. songs. Oh, fantastic! You know, that's song. why I think I love End of the Affair is probably my favorite ever song. Oh yeah, you just know, that's no, like crazy I, good. I've never played End of the Affair and not gotten goosebumps. Like yeah, every single yeah. every single time I'm just like, dude, you're insane. Like yeah. this is an insane song. You yeah, know? I just think that that like he yeah, he. He has levels of genius that like not many people will probably, you know, kind of ever reach, to be honest. Totally. And and that's why I appreciate him. And he's unabashedly himself. I think that's the thing that I just appreciate him about the most is he could so easily go out and dude, he has so many like hits that he could write. Like, like I said, like a lot of my favorite songs never made the records because they're right. just you know, and, and he and because he just has so many great songs, but he wants to be himself. And I'm like, dude great like he could so easily go down like not to because i love mumber and sons and and but like he could so easily just make every kingdom yeah that record yeah, yeah, yeah 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 and he just decides to be this yeah he's himself you know yeah. and sometimes it's frustrating but sometimes it's just like man you're awesome you know good for you and i think like you said like the true fans get it the yeah. true fans like really get it and uh the other ones who want to hear you know every kingdom over and or you know it's that's it's never gonna happen you know well i think they fell off they fell out the wayside probably when we got into noonday dream i would imagine yeah yeah it was really funny we were actually in italy um playing a gig a couple summers ago and ben ben looks at me and goes what if I just went out and played Every Kingdom Acoustic? I'm like, dude, I dare you. Like, just at a random, <laughs> like at a random show, I'm like, dude, I dare you to do that. It's like, no, 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 do it. <laughs> like, so like people would lose. I like people would lose their absolute shit. Yeah. Like, so would he? Is, would he not play them anymore? Do you think? Um, I don't think it's out of the question, but I think that it's just it's like I try to equate it to like being in a relationship when you're yeah. You're, you know, I think I think back to when I'm in my early 20s, like, I don't stand behind anything that I was, you know, <laughs> and so it's like, imagine not only that, but he's in under such a microscope of, yeah. you know, but it, it, I don't think it's that he doesn't like those songs or that we're, we won't play them again. I just think that he doesn't relate to them anymore. You yeah. know, I just think it's just it's one of those like, um, it's amazing music. It, same with I, for, you know, I forget where we were as well. It's like, what an amazing record, but it's just such a different time and a place in his life. And, yeah. and he, you know, I'm so still trying to be a lyric person. Um, and more so with Ben, like he just writes amazing lyrics, but like, I'm still like, when I listen to music, lyrics are kind of the, the last thing that I hear, unfortunately. Right. Um, but I think his songs are so personal. And so yeah. I think that's also a thing as well. Like he has an attachment in a way that, you know nobody understands so i think in a way he just is like i don't want to play that song <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 it's just like this is you and know so going back before all of this so what where did you i know you touched upon and then you said that you know you were trained and things like that so what how, yeah how, what's a kind of convent con condensed version of when you picked up a pair of sticks to Oh man, it's, it's the wildest story. Actually, I always wanted to play. So I started playing clarinet and piano. And then I went into my band teacher one day and I was just like, if you don't let me play, like, I kept looking back in the drum section. I'm like, they're having the most fun. Like, I want to be there. And so I, I gave her like this ultimatum. I was like, I'm going to quit band or I'm going to play drums. And she's just like, all right, I think we can find some space for you. And then, so we had this teacher growing up. So um, growing up in, in Wisconsin, like very small town, like, you know, not a lot going on, but dude, like I said, Justin was there, um, Brad and Phil Cook from Megafon went to the same high school I went to, like we had this world-class music education and we didn't even realize it um, until after the fact. And my, my teacher, G, we called him G, um, but he was from New York and he just decided to settle and teach kids music in rural Wisconsin in the middle of nowhere. And he gave us like world class, like we would go on, we would go to New Orleans and do like, I remember going to New Orleans and playing a jazz festival and the, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like the people who were adjudicating, 
you know, giving us like scores or whatever, which is such a weird thing. But they were just like, are you a college band? Like we were, cause we were so like good, yeah. you know? And um, so anyway, I went to college, never planned on really playing music other than like, just kind of for fun. And my freshman year, um, they were on their way back from a uh, music festival and they got into a bus accident and my drum t and my teacher, his wife, like his granddaughter, they all were like killed in this insane like series of events, dude, it was nuts. And so that next morning I like walked down to the office and I'm like, why am I not playing? Like, why, like, why would I not do the thing that I love the most? And this, this dude like taught me all about music. And so it like, it actually changed my life. Like I wasn't, was never really planning on doing music like as a thing other than like I said just sort of a you know hobby and then that next day I was just like this is this needs to be my life you know and so from that way for that day forward I I walked into the office and I went to be a drum teacher or like a music teacher you know and I just haven't looked back ever since you know and um it was one of those things as well. Like when I, when I got out of college, I got a call from my buddy who was down in North Carolina at the time, which was kind of a, also a big revelation. And I was living in Duluth and it was snowing. It was like 20 below zero, like just freezing. And he's like, dude, do you want to uh, move down to North Carolina? And I've got a band you can tour with. It was a band called Lost in the Trees. He's like, you got a tour set up? Like, and I looked out the window and I'm like, what's the temperature down there? And he's like, yeah, it's like 80 and sunny. I'm like, okay, yeah, North, Car <laughs> North Carolina it is. Like, let's try it out. And I think that is the story of my career in a nutshell is just not saying no to any opportunity that kind of just came up. I was just like, okay, here's what we're doing now. And, and not everyone can do that. And not everyone can be ready for that situation, you know? But I just unabashedly was like, okay, this gig sounds fun. Let's do this. Oh, that's, let's do this, you know? Yeah. And it just, it, it was wonderful, but yeah, the, the green hall thing was a big sort of uh turning point for sure. He was just the best teacher we could have asked for ever. Yeah. You know? And so and did you, have, you, have you taken over that teaching position? So I uh, would love to eventually someday. Um, but it's it, teaching is, it's like an 80 hour a week job. I mean, you really have to, and I think, you know, I used to teach drum lessons, but if I wanted to teach band and do it well, I would want to stop everything else and just commit myself to it. Like, I don't want to half, half ass it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm. So was Justin Vernon in band with you? I've never gotten to play music with him. I've been to his uh, studio many times and we're very good friends. And because those guys, I mean, it's, it's a huge time, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, totally. He's, he's my, he's still my favorite musician. Um, I've always looked up to him from day one. And so hopefully someday we'll get to play music, but uh, yeah, we'll see. I'm sure you will. We'll see you. I'm sure. I'm yeah. Sure you will. I hope, I hope so, man. He's, and he's just, he, again, he's another dude. He reminds me a lot of Ben and Ben actually looks up to Justin a lot too, but well, those guys he's very similar to Ben in, in that way. Like he's just, he's unabashedly just himself and, and dealing with the limelight in a way that he doesn't want to be in the limelight, but he's yeah. just so good. He's so good. You know, it's yeah, like yeah, yeah. one yeah. of the greatest of our generation, I think. Yeah, and I think when you're, like you said, when you're at that level of, of fame, like even in this country, like ben, ben is still very famous. And I always admire people like him and Adele and people like Ed Sheeran who can, when they go on hiatus, they literally just drop off. Yeah. I, that's, that's so incredibly admirable for people who are just like very yeah. famous. You know? I love that about Ben. Like he wants nothing to do. Like it was funny. We were, when we were down at Goon Hilly, um, he got a, Owen was down there, Owen's Ben's manager. And he was like, oh, you got a, a phone interview with iTunes in like 30 minutes. And me and Ben had been like drinking beer all day. And he's like, wait, what? <laughs> and I'm like, oh, you got this. Like, and he just, he just, he doesn't like second guess himself ever, but he doesn't like to like, yeah, he doesn't like everything that comes along with it, but it is part of it. You know, it's just like, yeah. you kind of have to deal with it if you're going to be, and I think that's the thing too, that with, with like Ben's fans, like that's the only thing with him. I'm just like, you, you, you should really appreciate these. And, and he really does. 
but he doesn't know how to like come across and and say it like know that they're appreciated but like ben's fans are so fantastic in that way where they're just like they're they're there for the long haul you know what i mean and you know when we show up at a gig and there's already people standing outside like four hours before the doors open i'm just like that's what a magical you know what a commitment like you you love this musician you know and we all have those musicians that we love that that way but yeah and i think what i love what i personally love about going to watch ben's gigs and you guys play is that it feels like he is playing be- and all of you guys you are playing because you just love playing oh 100%. You know? so yeah sometimes when there isn't always that crowd interaction Mm. Some people might be like, "Oh, I wish he would, you know, be more interactive." But then they hired, like, when you, when yeah, you, exactly. When you play yourself, like I've got, I've had the benefit of playing, and so, yeah. but like you know when it's authentic, and you know, absolutely, to go onto pyramid stage, like you said, he could have played the Wolves, you know, keep your head up, fear. He could have played all of them from the Every Kingdom album, but he played what songs he wanted to, and that's exactly that's just, like his his integrity is just is incredible his integrity is is off the charts and he's such a smart dude like just you know and he and he does care too like he's very he's very caring but like he just he he just doesn't know how to show it sometimes and i think sometimes it gets lost on the fans because you know i'm sure they walk away from gigs being like wow he wasn't very warm (laughs) you know (laughs) but he's but he really does care he really he couldn't care more like he's just such a fantastic dude in that way you know so yeah, yeah. yeah i'm very lucky because because i'm sensitive i'm overly sensitive sometimes and and he speaks to me in that way where it's just like he's i love that he wears his heart on its sleeve and sometimes it's not going to be warm and cozy but it's going to be him you know right. and i love right. that and it's all and it's all aimed at getting the best product i guess right exactly exactly and that's the thing is he's always searching for like that's when he gets frustrated is like why are this could be better this could always be better he wants the best product and he's always frustrated with his own playing and i'm like dude like oh my god watching him play sometimes i'm just like you are the most insane guitar player like what are you even doing right now this is nuts you know so you know when it comes to your own playing you said sometimes it's quite like difficult to watch yourself do you like where where does that come from do you think um i think just like anxiety and just like um i think it's always weird to like watch yourself or hear your voice or like whatever you know yeah um but probably mostly anxiety yeah yeah (laughs) it's funny like i have i have travel anxiety which is the worst i couldn't be in a a worse field like on tour (laughs) like being on the highway i like just get so wound up and like i'm like oh god why did i choose touring musician you know um but again yeah it comes from a place where you expect a lot of yourself like that's usually absolutely i think it's that thing too is like you want to you want to give people the best you know you want to give them the best and you you you're never satisfied but sometimes you know you'll listen to, like the goon hilly gig i was so like i was very nervous because we did it in advance yeah um and i didn't get sent it until i watched it you know yeah and i i was i was very nervous and i i couldn't have been more proud of like how we pulled it off like it was really a cool situation and i think i think maybe having that space too you know going back to what we were saying about um you know the covid situation i think musicians are going to come back and just be a more like grateful and more um just intentional you know what i mean like you know what you want to get out of it now and you know what you want to do and so yeah i it was it was a success on many levels it was so much fun we yeah. couldn't we could stop laughing and and just smiling the whole time i was just like this is insane it was it was incredible yeah. it was absolutely incredible but what i hope is that covid will also give more people who don't work in our industry more of an appreciation of like what we do and how hard it is to do our jobs because absolutely you know like certainly when we came home it was really disheartening to see uh, a lot of like um, government, like propaganda, I guess, that was saying like, you mm-hmm. know, oh, well, maybe, you know, you should retrain and maybe you should do another job. Maybe And like, you know, we get that narrative Literally. our whole lives and people don't necessarily Absolutely. see it. We just hear it over and over. Well, what's the plan B? What happens if this doesn't yeah. happen? It's like, Dude, my, my grandma still asks me when I go back for like Christmas. She's like, have you found a job yet? I'm like, 
still doing the music thing. It's, it's <laughs> going well. Yeah, you know? it's going really well. But yeah, it's that's the that's the narrative. Yeah, you're always sort of like it's not a real job or something. Mm. You know what I mean? But it like is being an artist is a real job, and I'm very lucky. Obviously, we're very lucky to get to do what we do. And you know, I think from the outside, sometimes people look at you know my friends when they come and see us on tour, they're always like, "This is your life? Like what?" You know, it's like. It is work. <laughs> There's yeah, work involved. Yeah, yeah. You know, but uh, it is amazing at the same yeah, time. Because I think it's I think the one thing that people want, out, you know, is is like live music again and live events and and those sorts of things. And I think it's very easy to look at our industry and go, oh, it's not valid. You know, they just like blah blah yeah. blah. But then, like the minute something like this happens, the only thing people want back is the arts that dude i cannot be more excited to go see a concert like i'm yeah. so looking forward to it like everything about like everything about live music i love like the social aspect the my actual favorite moment in a concert is right when the house music is playing and then the lights drop and i'm like oh yeah here we go <laughs> yeah. like it never it never gets old no. like if i'm playing a show or going to a show like that's my favorite moment. Like it's, there's something about it. That's just like, you, you're, you're not sure what's going to happen. Like, Oh, here we go. Like, this is going to be amazing. You know, there's nothing, there's nothing so, quite like it. There's nothing like it. Yeah, totally. So what are your gigs like on the cruise ship? Like what's a normal day for you? Like, are you doing mostly sort of like room, like where people are listening or are you kind of doing uh, like jazz vibes? Like so we do um, with carnival, they have uh I think they're about to introduce like a show band, um, which will play for shows on stage and also be part of the show. But primarily, it's um, like rock bands. So they'll they um, <clears throat> oh nice they'll manufacture. You've got a, a you've got a show that you do, yeah. So uh, yeah, they'll manufacture a band. So it might be like I'll be from Wales, then there will be, be like a Colombian bassist, and then like a Argentinian yeah. blues player, you know, a British singer. So they'll put they'll like do these Frankenstein bands, which is amazing because you can get hired as a solo musician, which is really rare. Yeah, and you know that probably you're gonna walk into like good players, you know. Yeah, because you your language and... is quite lengthy, and so um, you go, mm -hmm. and then they fly you to uh, Miami, and you do a month's worth of rehearsals in Miami with the band. Um, you, live, you live like next to the studio. They got these like state of the art studios, and you you live next Man. door in these apartments with your band, and you rehearse nine to five every day. You do maybe like two hundred and fifty songs, and then what? yeah, and then no. they, and then they fly you or drive you to your ship, and then you're on the ship for six months at a time. No way, so that's a dude. That's insane. <laughs> that when you, when you when you said two hundred and fifty songs, it it flash me back to when I was in college like I said um you know used to just do all the gigs but um me and my best friend Nate who actually lives in Heidelberg Germany at the moment um he's like my musical like he's he's my best friend but he's a guitar player but we used to do a live band karaoke and so basically we had a, yes, we had a list I of, love that yeah dude so people would come up and after a while we realized oh it's just the same people singing the same songs over and over <laughs> But like, but we had, we had a book of like, you know, over a hundred songs that were like, here we go. Let's yeah. do it. You know? Yeah. yeah, yeah and yeah. what a, what a great exercise and just what a, uh, you know, what a way to learn different styles and, and things like that. It's such a good challenge. Absolutely amazing. Like whenever people ask me whether it's like worth it or not, because I think I fell victim to it as well. I was like, oh, ships, you know, it's so, it's so funny in music. Like ships are seen as like, oh, you know, you do ships if you're you know not yeah but, you know, that but sort of thing. also like, and, and, then, well, and then i went and i had the biggest wake-up call because i was like this is like harder than the gigs at home you know like way harder like you know we have to play Absolutely. the nice thing is is that it's just the amount to of learn music. all the styles all the yeah, things the, styles, yep. the amount of music you play is just like you know you play 50 songs a night you know totally and so you're doing maybe like four to six hours every day you get one day off but so you know, I can make more, I can make more mistakes and I can repair those mistakes in one night than I will be able to do. It will take me a month at in home. A, in a, so yeah. your progress is just like, by the time you totally. start and finish one contract, you're like a different player. So, you know, I'm on my, I'm coming up to my third contract and I probably want to do maybe a few, like, you know, maybe three or four or five more um, mm -hmm. because I want to do, I would then want to go on to what you're doing, you know, like touring, yep. 
I'm playing like Glastonbury and Wembley are, are like my biggest life goals. Yeah. Oh, um, for sure. This is just yeah. such incredible. It's, it's such an experience. Incredible. It's yeah. all, it's all yeah. about it. And you know, that's what I was all about. Like back in the day as well is just like experience, you know? And, and I think it's invaluable. Like the lessons you learn from like dropping a stick or like, or, oh, whoops, I like missed this fill. How am I going to like, you know, like those sorts of things, like flying by the seat of your pants. And I think it's funny with Ben's band because I'm the only classically trained person in the band other than India. India, India, yeah, India. Say, yeah. Me and India always were able to like talk on that uh, wavelength. But um, everyone else just, I mean, Mickey and Ben, like they, Ben even like with time signatures, like when we were doing Sage, he's like, what time is this in? I'm like, dude. <laughs> like stop he like he doesn't even know how to like speak that language he's six and five. i think like it's 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 important to like make those mistakes and and do those things and like you know because now if something happens on the big stage i can i feel comfortable picking up you know like you can you can um save yourself easily you know because yeah. you sort of have that that knowledge of just like I've been there. I've done that. Um, one of my one of my favorite uh, stories ever. When I first started in college, um, this bass player named Brian Wells. He was an upright bassist in the jazz band, and we were playing a song that was like two hundred beats per minute, just like do 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 do, like just cruising. And within the first like two measures of the song, his uh, music stand fell, and his music just like a feather just like down <laughs> to the floor and he looks at me and I'm just I looked at him I'm like don't look at me like you got you got this and he's just like doo, 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 doo. And, and we like couldn't stop laughing at the end of it because it's like that's the rhythm section in a nutshell like where you have to be able to be malleable and you know if something happens because inevitably things are going to happen you know yeah um and, and you, you just you know, to be like able to to be able to pick it up is a good quality. We have such a more condensed time where we can repair it, like you said. Yeah. Than at home. So like at home, if you, even if you're gigging once a week, which is quite a lot, you know, on the local right. circuit, you know, it would take you a month to repair. Totally. It would, you know, you'd have to wait another week before you could make those, you, you know, re like repair those mistakes. Whereas, Absolutely. you know, on this one, I, I could do it by the next night. I could do it 24 hours later, you know, and so. Totally. You can kind of, you can see the progress like happening very and easily yeah, I, I don't think there's enough of an emphasis because obviously the, the number one question people ask with ships is is reading like i'm guessing yeah you're great being able to because you you went to band and i'm sure you had mm -hmm. incredible training with your reading charts like jazz charts mm -hmm. and like that and I, i'm like, out of practice now but <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure you're not <laughs> yeah <laughs> It's been and a while. So I think it's it's the but same. But no, but well, and the thing is, as well, is with drummers, we are it's we can make a mistake and it's heard. Mm -hmm. Like the thing with guitar players and you know the other instruments, you can flub on a note and it can get brushed. But dude, if you make a mistake on the drums, it's very known. And yeah. like, dude, I've gotten those looks, you know, from Ben before. Like, you know, be like he can hear it and i'm like i'm sorry like shit. <laughs> like you can't you can't hide a drum mistake like no. it's just not gonna happen you know and Absolutely. but we're all human and we all make mistakes you know it's just yeah but yeah it's 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 the instrument that's just very uh out in the open <laughs> and i just think reading is so important like i'm glad you know that this job does encourage it because i think there are too many people who hide behind the fact that they they don't want to learn or they can't be bothered to learn to read but then it only just stunts their growth. Like I, I try and right. like, I try and equate it to like learning all of the words and the language that you use from films and TV, yeah. or being able to physically read. It's exactly the mm -hmm. same. Like you know, when you, when you understand how to construct a sentence, you can construct any sentence. Whereas totally, it's like a fence or like a yeah. Yeah, if you're just using phrases you've heard from TV, you don't know where that comes from. It's exactly the same in drums. Well, it's a, it's a literal language. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And if, so if you if you see a fill. Instead of thinking, you know, if you can read, you could be like, well, if I if I notate that out, well, it's using this, 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 and this. Well, why don't I just mm -hmm. change it up a bit and I can just use it this way? You understand right. the way they've constructed that. Whereas if you can't totally. read, you can only copy the phrase. Exactly. And and you're and it's the forethought, you know, it's like the, you know, I actually had to stop smoking weed 
before playing gigs because <laughs> I would like I would I would play a I would play a fill and then like five minutes later I'd be like why did I play that fill that was so <laughs> dumb you know just like you're thinking like backwards and it's like I you know I like to have forethought I'm like okay here's what's coming up here's what we're you know here's what we're doing but dude it's tough drums are drums are a wild beast man it, they're it, a lot more complicated it, than people yeah. think I think I know but you know the good drummers and and I you know get from talking to you that you're the same way it's just is being like a sensitive drummer like you just have to be ready for everything and you're just like oh okay here's what we're doing now okay like yeah um and and that's my favorite you know and yeah. like I said I'm not I'm never going to be the flashiest drummer but I like to just be sensitive I think you know since it that was the biggest lesson I ever learned was like oh I don't have to play loud and fast yeah like oh okay I can just put like playing soft is like cool and exciting and fun so yeah. and I think like uh, you you have a lot of musical integrity which is just so yeah. incredible because like you said you know I do covers and stuff on like Instagram and YouTube and stuff and that kind of gives you a bit more scope to open up because you know you're not playing with people who are live so it doesn't matter but then when I get to the ship it like you said it's about serving everyone yeah else, serving the tune exactly so, you know some of my favorite drummers like Jeff Picaro you know those mm. sorts of people um Why am I blanking on this guy's name? <laughs> yeah, he was the Michael. Yeah. He played for Michael Jackson. He was like the type. Oh, whoa, whoa, John. Yeah, uh, yeah, I can't think of. You him. know what I'm on about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. John J.R. Robinson. That's who I'm on about. But yeah, exactly. Those it's guys. Just... It's like they just do. It's like Roger Taylor from Queen. Like they yeah. just do exactly what it needs. You know. Exactly, and it's like, am I not impressed by like? Um, I don't know if you've if you've you've probably seen this kid. He's from the states. His name's Grayson uh, Knutson or something. Have you seen this kid? He's like he's like the next Freddie Rich. He's like 17 years old. Like I've been kind of obsessed with him. But <laughs> but I'm like, dude, that's you're not gonna like. I I want to just like hold him and be like, dude, like slow down. Like <laughs> yeah. you know, like you're you're amazing. But like that's not gonna be functional in any band. Like just you know be sensitive and yeah. be because you know the world living now is so instant gratification if they need the 30 second window now of like show me everything yeah. you can do in this 30 seconds oh totally and if it's not yeah. if it's not fast or, or complicated or linear i'm i'm not it's not it's not going to get any oh, yeah and you're not getting endorsement it's like what like what i know time, you know yeah totally i've got a buddy in north carolina too nick baglio and he's just it's insane like the stuff that he plays i'm like that's nuts but like where would you ever i would never hire you for a gig because yeah. not not that i don't you know think that he's a great drummer love his drum style but it's just like it's just so much yeah and he's he's i know that he's always going to play the intense fill that like nobody it the song doesn't need it unless it's, it's a very like niche situation you know what i mean and so yeah i think honestly like the reason i've gotten so many gigs and like been able to be so successful is because i always have tried to chameleon my way into the situation you know i'm just like you know like i said like i don't want you to even know that i'm here um other than knowing that i got your back you know what yeah. i mean yeah 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 and so talking, uh, you do a lot of recording as well you do a lot of cool like studio work uh you did the noonday dream and you've yeah. done stuff with on ben's new album so yeah what what would you say uh, some of the keys to becoming like a, a, a really great studio musician? Well, like I just said, I think just that that whole thing of being a chameleon and, and just being up for whatever ideas other people want to hear, you know, having having no um, ego in the studio, you know what I mean? And I think like I've had to, you know, you pick and choose your battles. Like there's some things you feel very strongly about, but most of the time I'm just like, sweet man. Okay. You want to hear this? That sounds great. Let's do it. You know, let's, do this and one of my most proud studio moments was a band called mandolin orange um from north carolina and um yeah we we i met them and then we recorded like everything was first track and we just kept looking at each other like whoa it's like instinct right yeah and even with like ben stuff you know with anything you always kind of go back and it's like your instinct is usually the right thing you know yeah um sometimes you can go down such a wormhole of like chasing tones and chasing this and chasing whatever but 
yeah, instinct and and just um, yeah, just feeling it out are kind of kind of the. And so, do you go in with like a so if say say Ben brings you Ben brings you there's your man without any drums on it. Do you have like mm. a kind of like process or or do you just like you said you kind of feel it out? Totally feeling it out. Yeah, I I'd like to say that I have a plan but i i never have a plan it's 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 always just feeling it out and sometimes it works and sometimes it takes a minute and sometimes but usually like yeah there's your man was was crazy we that was probably the song we spent the most time on on that session um but yeah how we came to the conclusion on that uh beat and whatever like just r- ridiculous <laughs> like you go from like four snares to three to two. Oh yeah that, <laughs> that, that like, was planned yeah. that was planned right not really no really? it was no dude when i heard when i heard it back i was like oh that's the drum take you decided on that's crazy <laughs> like and oh so yeah what, no there was what, what, there was no intention involved uh maybe from his perspective when he was mixing and stuff but from my perspective yeah i no idea no oh, idea what's going on. how many takes do you usually do you usually take um it de- kind of depends um you know like i said usually we always go back to that first take um this last session was different because we had um a producer you know um aaron desner who was amazing um and he loves to just follow any idea and, and go with it but um but yeah, it's just, it just kind of depends. Usually, yeah, I don't like to do many takes at all because I, like I said, I feel it pretty instantly. You know, I'm like, I think this is the vibe, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think usually the more takes that you do on a song, the more frustrated you get. And then you yeah, start to yeah, like yeah. over things. And, um, but that's easier said than done, I'd say. Like, it's, but yeah, I, I like the, the fewer the takes, the better. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And so do you do you get the music before you go into the studio? No, never. <laughs> no, especially that would, with that. That would give me such anxiety, you know, yeah. that would give me the worst anxiety. Dude, well, with, the, with this last record, we got zero, we got zero information. And like, I flew, he's like, you're going to fly to Paris tomorrow. And we're going to do like a week in the studio. I'm like, what songs are we playing? And he's like, you'll see. I'm like, what? <laughs> it's like, this is insane, dude. But that's just kind of his vibe. I'd say that's very unique. Um, usually with other bands, you'll get like the songs in advance that you can kind of like, you know, wrap your head around it and and do that thing but yeah he's he's uh he's a unique beast so do you do will you have will you do like a quick chart for yourself or will it just be do you just kind of follow like the natural music yeah. progression i guess totally yep and like i said because he's because they're not trained they don't know how to like you know because i'm i'm so from that school of like let's start let's stop okay one two yeah. three, you know like let's <laughs> yeah. do it and, and with yeah. with them it's just it's they're just they're just doing it and you just are like okay mickey too like mickey cracks me up he's <laughs> he's the best man he's just so he he is um kind of taken over the role of music director i would say in the wow. band which is fantastic like i think it was one thing that was kind of missing especially from the last tour was just someone to be like here's the chart here's what yeah, yeah the yeah. plan yeah. is because ben just doesn't have a plan like if it was up to him you'd be just like chasing him around and was like okay <laughs> here we go and so to have mickey yeah. being like you know here's what we're gonna do here you know here's what's happening um is very helpful and awesome and so do you play uh do you play it live as a group or do you in the, do you in do you do individual instruments um yeah live as a group i mean i did a lot of homework you know well with that you know like we were saying um with this record i was able to listen to to actually have the record and to like study off of that like going over so on my flight over even though he only gave me a week heads up i like was was listening on all the way and like okay i like know what i need to do and accomplish and yeah so um but but yeah usually we do it as a group you know Sa- sage was the most insane one from this last session like when we first started playing, we're like, how the heck are we going to do this? And then we we're like, oh, okay. We once we like, and one thing that I told Ben, which was a lesson that I learned when I was very young and I, it always stuck with me was the most difficult part of a piece or the most, 
the song that like drives you crazy the most make that your favorite like learn it so well that it's your favorite thing Mm -hmm. you know and I think and Ben like it was an aha moment for Ben as well because he was like oh dude that's such a good way to like look about it it was like the most frustrating part that you have make it your favorite part and then it's like you know make it the most exciting thing versus like this thing that you're scared of yeah you know and I think that was the thing with there's your man I wish we would have cracked that code with there's your man live because we always would see that on the set list and be like oh god here we go like yeah. let's see how this goes you know um and so I think that's a cool revelation that we've kind of come to as well and so we sage we just worked it so much where it became our like favorite tune to play yeah and then on like it's so it's so funny you say that because it kind of works the same with the ships you know we have kind of the standards that you play you know like mustang sound yeah. all of that all of that sort of stuff yeah, yeah. and then you have like yeah and then you have like ones that are really out there like uh, ain't nobody by shaka khan but we do the live version, oh yeah with the live version which is like mind-blowing oh. there are, like, there are, I'll, I'll send it to you there are like stabs every like other bar there are like no hits, way there are, there are hits on like the e of one like oh it's, god it's like it's oh. really like it's, it's but it's shot. satisfying like when you get it down it's right like, oh, right so you know what i mean like, in rehearsals, yeah. we, we hated it we cursed that song out no end but when you got to the yeah. ship and you were playing like my girl for the 400th time <laughs> and then you came into you were looking forward to playing the difficult one yeah you know? you're exactly yep exactly and that's the feeling like yeah, make it your make it your favorite. You know, if it, yeah. if it frustrates you, just make it this thing that it's going to be your favorite because you're going to know it so well. And I think that was a thing too. Like you know, you were classically trained, so like in band, like when you're part of like that big orchestra setting, like hitting those parts, and like when you finally learn like a vibraphone part, you're like, yes, I got it. You know, I can nail yeah. it. Like this is it's it's such a good feeling you know yeah, yeah. When, you, when you can get like a difficult part down you know yeah and like you said you built your like on tour you know hopefully when you tour the record you know mm. you'll, you'll actually look forward to sage over maybe, totally. over maybe something that is like a bit was a bit easier to learn and a bit easier yeah to absolutely well so my favorite song off the record is um uh oh my gosh kid, sorry kid yeah I um, love, it's I love it's it's, it, it's my favorite and w- which was funny so ben we were talking and every one in the band had a different favorite song off the record. And I was like, dude, that's a testament to how great of a record it is. Cause we've yeah. all got a different favorite song, you know? Yeah. I think and, mine's Far Out. Um, Far Out's amazing. Far yeah. Out's such a good song. Such a good vibe. Just so such amazing writing and such a good tune. But yeah, so Star Kids are my favorite, but then it became, um, you know, once we learned, I was very, anxious about sage it was just like how are we going to do this like you know and also you know playing a drum beat that wasn't mine was i was just like okay uh, well here's this like famous it, was that yusuf yusuf day is yeah, yeah. Uh, amazing like, to see yeah, he, he came in he came in for a half of a day at the studio when we were there and just nailed these like insane drum parts and i was just like dude come on like what in the world <laughs> you know and a little intimidating but also like just very impressive and yeah um but yeah so to learn his part i'm like i'm gonna try to do it justice but i'm not him you know again it's like that thing it's just like i'm gonna play it the way and ben was really sweet about that as well he was just like you're not use of days like play the way that you want to play this beat you know like don't try to make it beat for beat perfect you know i'm like that's fantastic it's great yeah, news. I think you, like, <laughs> on the Goon Hilly track, you you absolutely nailed it. Like it was. Yeah, it was great. It was, um, it was that's great. I've never heard that done before, where it's like sixteenths and then it's like <laughs> and, and, yeah, the un, yeah, the un, like that's that's such a unique way of playing that, isn't it? Wild, yeah, very fun. And again, like not something that I, not a conclusion I would have come to. Yeah. Um, but what a what a great beat for the song, you know? So is it what difficult a cool to like to to because like it. The most difficult part is playing someone else's part because that's not ne- that's not in your that's not built into your muscle memory, you know. So when I, after totally, the- but yeah. But also, I love like I can uh, I would um, almost sometimes rather walk in and learn someone else's part because that's kind of my wheelhouse. Like yeah, when it comes to like coming up with original like ideas, like I like to think that I you know have that, but I I'm really good at just 
kind of cruising in and, and learning um, the parts that are already there, you know? Yeah. And I think maybe it comes from that classical brain where it's just like, oh, I like that there's a part. Oh, perfect. I just learned this, this situation. And, um, but yeah, the creativity is a whole nother, whole nother beast for sure. Yeah, I just think whenever I think of your playing, I literally just picture this like perfect sixteenth note groove. <laughs> <laughs> literally, yeah, that's, that's such, my that's my groove. It's that's all I got. A, it's such a difficult <laughs> one to to master as well, isn't it? Yeah, it can be, but one it just feels so good. It's just like, oh. Yeah. It's like my go-to. It's my go-to groove. <laughs> I think my playing dream goal with a 16th note is to get uh, I Keep Forgetting by Michael McDonald with because that was Jeff Picaro who played yeah. it. And that's like, I think that's 94 BPM um, single rights, which is like quite quick, you know? Oh, yeah. But sure. I think what I loved is I saw um, Jeff Picaro did uh, something at the Musicians Institute. It was like a throwback of him doing like a clinic. And they were like, mm -hmm. you're known for you know, your Michael McDonald 16th note and you're known for like the Rosanna Shuffle. He was like, man, I hate shuffles. He was like, uh, yeah, totally. <laughs> and so I was like, this is crazy. Like you're like the <laughs> guy and like you say you don't like yeah, it. You're the guy who shuffles. Yeah. yeah. So it's so interesting to hear people reflect on their own playing. You know what I mean? Totally. Yeah, absolutely. And so, no, and it's, uh, yeah. yeah. And so you like was... just kind of like go in with, if you're going to record, go in with a, like as a blank canvas not with any kind of like preconceived beats or ideas or anything like that totally right? and i think you know like i said the more the older i get and the more that i play the more comfortable i am in my own skin you know it's just like you know like we were saying it's like this is the drummer that i am this is the drummer that i'm going to be and i can't compare myself to you know the best of the best because you know i'm not them you know yeah. i'm not I'm not this other drummer, I'm myself. And I think that's an important thing too, is, you know, like you were saying, it's, it's a language, right? So you just have to, we all speak differently and we all, you know, learn the words and, and you play the way that you want to play, you know? Yeah. And I think that that's crucial, well, but it, but it, but it takes a lot to, to come to, you know? What you have to remember is that Ben, Ben could have probably chosen anyone in the world he wanted. And, and, Dude, that's, and so you're there. Like I, and so, I, I, yeah. I completely get the imposter syndrome. When I first got chosen for Carnival, yeah. you know, they're, they're the best cruise liner in the world. And, and for weeks, I was like, what, like, what did they see? You know, like, what did they see in me? <laughs> and like you said, you get there and you think, yeah, this is why. This is why. I was yeah, so this is why. You know? Totally. And the Goon Hilly gig was really, uh, you know, after this whole year of craziness, it was a very reassuring, you know, I was starting to lose the plot. I'm like, maybe I don't even play drums, you know, like, what, what am I doing, you know, and, and so to go there and, and do that, it just really reaffirmed, um, yeah, that I should be there, and, and that it was just such a great experience, but yeah, the imposter syndrome never gets lost on me, I'm always just like, why in the heck would they, why would they choose this crazy guy from uh, America <laughs> when they could easily, you know, have someone else, so. But I think that also keeps you humble. Totally, yeah. I try to, I try to be. <laughs> I think like, I think the biggest thing I've learned from this series is that no one wants to work with an asshole. Gosh, dude, dude, that is a big lesson. Um, you know, and I think about like when I shout people for gigs, it's like the people that I think about are, it sounds, it sounds terrible, but like half is, I would rather take half the talent and twice the hang, like any yeah. day of the week. Yeah. any day i would i'd rather play with that person i'd rather like hands down and i think it goes to that thing is like i know so many insane drummers but i wouldn't shout a lot of them because some some of them are just not great hangs you know yeah. and it's just like uh you know i think being the hang is like 100 percent half if not more of the gig like yeah definitely i completely like, agree. I 100 percent. because like, like you guys like you know we spend <clears throat> six months on a ship together but the ship we can kind of like go our own way and we just have to show up and play together each night but for you guys you have to you're in like buses like all day long you know yeah <laughs> we have fun though <laughs> <laughs> well it's a good job that he's chosen a really great band then what's that oh i think we're probably wrapping up pretty soon yeah we're not far off i've only got one more question if that's okay. <laughs> oh yeah what's what's up 
No, oh, just something I just like to, I love to end on is just, and we've covered so much and you've given just such yeah, a yeah. advice just through what you've said anyway. Dude, what a pleasure to talk to you, man. I but, can't wait to like hang and finally meet. And yeah, I'm have coming. A, have a drink maybe before the um, South Bank show or something. Yeah, I'm at, yeah, I'm at that, the one in September. I'm there. Okay, uh, sweet. I think, on the, I think I couldn't get tickets to the Saturday. It sold out. Mega. Well, I can, I can easily sort out tickets if you need I think tickets. I think on the Sunday. So let's definitely do that. Uh, okay perfect but the last thing i was going to ask is just your final piece of advice for the people that would love to love to do what you do oh my goodness well like i said just be a good person you know and i think the world needs just empathetic chill people you know and i think it, it, especially in the music industry but like everywhere just go about your day and try to bring some like positivity you know like there's yeah. just, there's so much negativity and and you can get so caught up in like, you know, this and that, but it's just like, you know, and I even, I even get there too sometimes. And you just think like the world's such a small situation, but it's just like, yeah, just be good. <laughs> <laughs> well, like it's, that. it's, it's easier said than easier said than done, but. <laughs> and that's that. Thank you. I just, I can't. That, that said, I'm definitely going to go get stoned right now. Yeah. That having, having said that. <laughs> I can't thank Dude. you enough for doing this, man. What an absolute pleasure. I'd love to do it again sometime. And, and dude, thank you. You're wonderful to talk to. We'll, we can't wait to hang. <laughs> yeah. So